puppy. Okay. We're live, but we're just going to have to hold a moment. My mom's going to be right back. Thank you. Maya, it's my animal. <laughs> we're here. Hi guys. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. Oh. Really, your friend is trying to give me hugs right now. <laughs> Hi guys. This is Bailey's stuffed animal. She's very fond of being in videos with us. So, here's real life. Yeah? Your mm -hmm. friend is a little bit too in love with me. Okay, so real life, um, what's really going on <laughs> is um, my daughter's not feeling well, so she's joining me next to me. She was a little sick this morning, and my husband is, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, no, daddy's not on there, honey. Let me know if you need anything. Okay, um, my husband just picked up the moving truck. So we're officially taking off um, tomorrow. So we're packing the rest of the house stuff today. And the moving truck. Mm -hmm. So that was my daughter. She's, she's joining us. I'm over here on the side. Hope she feels better. Oh, I think Megs. All right, what did I miss? Rolling back. Good morning, Beth. Oh, she is beautiful. Inside and out. She's amazing. She really is amazing. Okay, what do we got here? Good morning, Kathleen. Okay, so, morning, Laura. Um, so who that's on this morning um, has any kind of ahas or recaps from yesterday? Um, like things that they resonated from day two of the training, whether you were live with us or you watched it on the replay. They said get well soon. Thank you. Um, your big ahas from yesterday uh, that you walked away with. Anything that comes up for you, or that got stirred up. Just anything that might have gotten that might have gotten stirred up um, while you were working through this, working through the stuff that came up, working through the stuff that we talked about. Um, it's a lot, right? Like it takes a certain unique kind of human being to show up to these kind of things and be willing to dig in and look at yourself. So day one, we talked about facing yourself and facing others, right? Like being able to face the shit that you see in your life that you know is yucky and messy. And instead of avoiding it and going back to, and here's something I didn't mention that day. When we avoid looking at like the reason we avoid the areas that we're the worst at is because it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. Like, okay, especially coaches, like coaches hopping on a Facebook live and they feel like they're not that good at a Facebook live. They're going to avoid doing a Facebook live and they're going to go back to doing the things they feel like they're good at. So just by nature as human beings, yeah, Adina, I have no room in my life for, I'm no longer available for, love it. Girl, your comment on my post this morning made me laugh out loud. I started laughing so hard. Oh, it's good stuff, right? 
So we avoid looking at the areas of our life where we feel like we suck at it, right? Good morning, Diana. So it's just natural human behavior to be like, well, I feel like I suck at that, so I'm gonna avoid it, and I'm just gonna continue to keep doing these things over here that I feel like I'm good at. It would be equivalent to like going to the gym and only doing biceps because you feel like you're good at biceps and maybe like some bench pressing, and like you literally never do squats. So like you're just always doing the thing that feels comfortable and you never do the thing that feels uncomfortable, but you're gonna get lopsided, right? Oh my God, so many. Creating needs for yourself and showing up. Yeah, creating needs. We're going to review that one because that one is so big. Showing up for yourself to do the work. After I answered the questions last night, I received a call from a friend to attend a world convention in Montreal that I wanted to attend, but I had looked into what I needed in order to be able to go. And bam, once the space was created, the universe delivered. Every freaking time. And here's the deal. The few rare times, or you know, maybe it's even many times. It doesn't matter how many. But if there's a time... Excuse me, I haven't had any coffee yet, so it's looking really inviting. <laughs> and I woke up this morning and my finger is numb. The inside of these two fingers, if I get any medical gurus on here, the inside of these two fingers are numb. So, um, right, so we talked about um, really showing up and um, creating a need for yourself. And if there's a time when you create a need for yourself and the need isn't met, it's still for your good. There's a reason in that season, in that growth spurt, in the whatever it is, and you get to look for it. So instead of being like, oh my God, see, I was the one bird that decided to fly out of the net and then I didn't actually learn how to fly. That's bullshit, right? It's really more, we're gonna take that leap of faith and we're gonna create the need. And if the need isn't met, it's guidance. It's not like, oh, that door, see, it wasn't meant for me. I'm just not meant for this. So many people do that. And I think that's like a religious thing that we're taught. Like if you go to do something and, the, and, and it's not easy, then that door is closed and it's not meant for you. I don't, I just don't agree with that. Mm. Like, shit's not easy. <laughs> like, if you want to have a seven-figure business where you travel the world and be able to take it with you, or you're just out in the world living your purpose, giving your gift to the world's coming to life, you're living that dream that you envision, you're going to hit tough spots and rocky spots in the road, right? And shit's going to feel like it's not going my way, or it's going to feel like I created this need and it wasn't met. Most of the time it will be. And you'll be pleasantly surprised at from what it, the fear is and what actually happens is way better than what we imagine. It's never as hard as we think it's going to be. And when it is as hard as we thought it was going to be there's a reason for it so you could look at that and be like oh see I knew it or you could look at it and be like okay what's the lesson here where am I being guided where am I being pointed because it's not just you'll know if you're like pushing 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 something and you're striving and you're trying to force it and it's not working you know that and you know the difference between I tried and it didn't work easy so it's not meant for me that's some bullshit like we're just going to call the red flag on that one right So congratulations, Megs. <laughs> Celebrating with you, girlfriend. What do I believe is true? Yes. Fantastic question to ask yourself. This is a, a great journal prompt, right? Good morning. I don't know how to say your name. What car? I'm bad at that. How much support or happy can I accept? Mm -hmm. How huge is that? Right? This is really big. So we asked ourselves some questions just to start to get to know ourselves better to know what we want because if you don't know where the fuck you're going how are you going to get there so if you don't know what you want you can't have it and we asked ourselves some questions to get to know ourselves to get to learn the parts of us that's like the part of us that wants to change and grow and the part of us that wants the same is like duking it out right oprah winfrey no greater battle than the part of me that wants to change and the part of me that wants to stay the same battling it out so what we get to do and this whole journey is about actually just pausing for a second and getting to learn huh, when I start to tell myself that's the thing I want then what happens when I start to step out and do the, the very action the power moves right like ACA groups that we run it's all about power moves when I go to step out and do that power move what's the thing that stops me what is the thought that came to mind and you're starting to learn yourself and you're starting to learn your patterns and your behaviors and your beliefs that are really running the show under the water right so the way I was taught is kind of like like a, uh, what's the word Get with me. Uh, iceberg so when you see an iceberg right you see the tip of the iceberg it's just a little tip of the iceberg and then there's a massive mountain underneath the water that you don't see so like you know the top of the water might be going this way but underneath the water it's raging this way don't do that Sorry. does that make sense so in our life it's like we I want this I want this I want success I want freedom I want financial freedom I want time freedom I want 
um, you know, the body that I want. I want to feel my best. I want to have energy. I want to be romantic. I want to be intimate. I want to be seen. I want to be known. I want to be famous. I want to whatever it is, right? And that's like the water going this way, but underneath there's this raging river just pulling you this way. And you get so frustrated with yourself because you go to show up and you get excited and you go to do it and then pfft, a few days later, it's like oh, right back to the same old behavior. Why? Right? This is what we all want to know. Why? Because there are, there are beliefs, right? Actually, let me, let me put up my stuff. There are beliefs underneath the water that are pulling us in the opposite direction. It's the beliefs, right? And so a belief, someone actually sent me a message and um, she asked me a very intelligent question. She said, why am I, why have I always, basically, why do I believe I have no worth? Sorry, she's just not feeling well. Um, so why, right? That's like what everyone wants to know. My mom as a kid told me I was the why girl, right? So the reason why is because there's a thought that you've thought over and over and over to the point where now it's a belief. It's entrenched in your system. It's entrenched in your beliefs. So for example, I'm going to give you an example because I know this gets like confusing for people, but this is really, if you can get this, you'll change every area of your freaking life, every single area of your life, right? Oh my God, I didn't write that. Well, you must have wrote it because it has your name on it. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Beth. I just want to make sure I'm catching up on these. I'm also calling bullshit on the thoughts and shifts to love so huge. Not today, say in. Yeah. <laughs> Auto type. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so. You think a thought over and over and over, it becomes a belief. That's just the way it is. Now, the thought came from an event. We know that, right? Like, so whatever happened, this is basically common knowledge out there. Something happened in your life. When it happened, you made up what it meant. You made up what it means about you, what it means about the world, the people around you, what it means for your future, what it means for your safety, what it means about your worth, right? So, but then what happened is you just kept thinking that thought over and over and over and it became an entrenched belief. So for me, my belief was, right, like there were events that happened and the belief was if I'm outside of the house, if I'm away from my children, if I'm, if I'm successful, then my children are going to get hurt, right? Like something bad's going to happen to my kids. So if I, in the core of my being, really believe that my success and being wealthy and successful and happy and living my dreams and my gifts and traveling the world is literally actually going to cause harm harm, physical harm to my children, do you think I'm going to actually do that? In my head, I can be like, why am I showing up this way? I don't get it. I want, I know I want this. So why am I, why do I keep sabotaging it? Right? It's what people call it. I don't believe it's a sabotage, but like for all intents and purposes, we can use that word. Like, why would I keep sabotaging myself? Right? Because subconsciously, which is where all of my behavior comes from, I actually believed that I would hurt my children if I was successful, that I was taking away from them, I was harming them, and I was leaving them vulnerable and open to really horrible things happen to them. So it's really no wonder that I, that I believe that I would behave that way, right? So I could spend all my time and energy just trying to fix my behavior, trying to fix my, why won't I show up on a Facebook Live more? How come I don't, you know, make my offers? How come I don't, you know, work out every day and eat well so I have energy? How come I don't be, you know, sweeter and nicer? How come I'm not more consistent? How come I'm not banging out the sales pages? How come I'm not doing my journaling better? How come I'm not blah, 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 right? I could spend all my time and energy there just trying to force myself to change. I'm doing good for two weeks and then falling back on my ass. Or I could do the real work the actual work that will shift and transform that raging waters underneath for it to start changing and it start being in alignment with where I'm trying to go. Because when I can actually create alignment with those deep beliefs with where I'm trying to go, all of a sudden the behavior changes and it's easy. You hear t people talking about like, it, it just became easy. It just, it's what I do. It's just, it's the normal way of how I show up, right? This is how we do it. But you can never get there if you spend every single day avoiding that stuff, avoiding what it feels like, avoiding acknowledging the shit that you suck at, acknowledging the things that are going on, and you just keep veering off and squirreling out and distracting yourself and doing a bunch of busy work to keep yourself like feeling like you're doing a good job because you're not laying on the couch eating potato chips, watching TV every day. You're doing shit, so that feels better than doing nothing. Only doing nothing will actually allow you to start addressing the raging waters underneath. Do you see what I mean? So you are completely off the hook for your behavior. How's that? 
How's that for you? You are literally completely off the hook for your behavior. <laughs> yeah, you're on the hook for your beliefs. It's your beliefs that you're on the hook for. And it's up to you and it's your responsibility. I don't care what happened. I know shit happened when you were a kid. I know shit happened as an adult. I know shit's still happening. I know that things have been painful. I know that life has been tough. I know that you've gone through the ringer. I know that you've been the one that always pushed through and showed up and came out on the other end or you wouldn't freaking be here. Being here tells me so much about you. I already know all this. I don't need to know anymore. You're still on the hook for how you believe and how you feel. You are the only thing that is in control of how you believe and how you feel. And so just because it started from a place of trauma that wasn't your fault doesn't mean that you're not at fault now because now you're responsible for that, right? So I'm going to help you guys understand how to actually, but you are adorable. Well, thank you, Roberto. My husband thinks so too. <laughs> That's so me with my daughter's needs. Yep. Caught that in the stuff on Friday. Yep. Okay. So the first thing is the first thing. It's like, we need to actually just own the fact that uh, we have some beliefs that are going against the grain on where we need to go. And by slowing down, we will actually speed up. Slower is faster. That is not something that we are taught in our culture. Slower is actually faster. Slowing down, being intentional, making power moves. And this is what I've learned. So I'm just gonna share straight out. I'm gonna share, like, it's literally why I built Accelerate Coaching Academy. I was in Bali one time and I was sitting at the little desk and I was, I was just, the creative energy in Bali is so epic and I just came up with this entire plan for this program and we've run it, you know, I don't know how many times now, a lot of times, it's been multiple years that we've been running it for and we just, you know, up, upgrade it and up level it, right? So that's like side note that I'm just saying, like, I believe in this so much that I literally built an entire academy based on this, right? Because I've seen it and watched it and I know it works, right? So what we do is we actually just get honest. What is the, like, what is the thing in front of me? What is the thing that I'm stepping into that I'm going to do? For some people, it's really just like, I'm going to own that I want to be famous. And I've heard some people saying that, like, yeah, I want to be famous famous and then like I feel greedy for doing that like bullshit you want to be famous because you want to serve people and you want you want you know to, to help people so the we actually have to go for something if there's no goal in front of you how are you gonna hit a wall and when you hit that wall and you're like oh this is what got flushed up right everything else is just like I don't know what it is it's just complete waste of time I've heard this called like a minimum viable product is how Facebook was actually created right so Facebook was created by you take software you throw it out there see how it works and then upgrade it right so you need to actually do something you need to actually do something come back with a result let shit get flushed up and then we address the shit that gets flushed up instead of sitting on our ass and just like like being like well I'm just trying to figure it out in my head I'm trying to understand why I'm trying to change it I'm trying to figure it out without taking any action so nothing gets stirred up nothing gets flushed up it's not gonna work right it does not work like that so what I've learned through watching many people and I'm sure that I'll write a book on this someday is actually it's going to require you to show up and take some brave action without knowing how it's all gonna work out right because if you look at who you are today the current, the current way you show up is not evidence of what's possible for you in the future. Whatever you did yesterday and the day before, all the stuff in the past is not evidence of what's possible for you in the future. What's possible for you in the future is what you friggin' choose today, what you choose and shift into right now and then start operating out of. So think for a second, right? We were talking yesterday about that tension that you feel, like allowing yourself to create space, like I created a need and people are scared to do that. And we're gonna take that one step further. I know, there's actually a step further. Sorry, Chad, can't slow down for you. <laughs> You'll have to watch the replay and put it on half speed, right? So we're gonna take it one step forward. So we're actually going and we're creating a need. We see that we wanna get some first. We admitted what we wanted. We actually owned it. And then we started taking a step forward and creating a need. We put ourselves in a position where our ass is on the line, right? We're burning that ship. We're going there. We're like all in, putting my ass on the line. I'm creating that need. And now after that, what I'm gonna to start to do is I'm gonna to start to actually scan to see where am I trying to squirrel out and avoid and go to the places where I'm already good at instead of staying in the tension and moving forward with the things that I suck at. And then when I give the things I suck at more attention, what happens is it starts to expand. Does this make sense? So then as it starts to expand, that's when we get to actually 
do the work required for us to become the person that we haven't been up until now. So we don't look at our past, we don't look at what we used to do, we actually make a decision in alignment with who we know we want to be. Because if you're not making a decision from the place of who you know you want to be, then all you're doing is recreating more of what you've already had. Think about that for one sec. I know that I don't consistently show up for Facebook Lives. Let's just say that's someone's complaint. I don't consistently show up for Facebook Lives but this business plan that I have, me launching this group, I'm gonna take six days to launch this next group, um, requires me to show up for Facebook Lives every day, but I'm pro I know myself, I'm not gonna show up for Facebook Lives, so I'm not gonna do that plan, I'm gonna do something else. I'll do this email thing, even though that's not in alignment at all, right? So you will actually contract and like step back based on who you've always been up until now. And the reason you're doing it is because you don't have any tools. Why would you think that you're gonna behave any differently if you don't have the tools? So that's what I'm trying to give you today, do you see? So it's like taking the future version of you that you know you're meant to be and that you want to be and you're choosing to be and you're shifting into right now and you're trusting that you're gonna follow through and I'm gonna give you tools so that your pattern will calm down and that you're not feeling like, yeah, but what? But I need to know, I need to feel confident that I'm actually gonna show up the way I would need to show up in order to make this thing happen. Otherwise, you're not gonna move forward. You're gonna just take safe steps and you're gonna do a bunch of busy work, which is what you've been doing, right? I want to slow down, but it feels so counterintuitive and I worry that I'm going to hide, uh, hinder my success. Yeah, that's so common, right? It's like, every, I think every entrepreneur could say that. We all could say that. And like, here's the thing. Here's a shortcut. I'm gonna give you, here's your first tool. Tool number one, uh, how's it working for you? <laughs> right? Just the like common sense, like how's it working for you? So far, right now, how's it working for you to go, go, go and not slow down and not take power moves, right? well, I'm not getting the result that I want. Cool, so let's shift then. Like, it sometimes can be that easy. Tool number two is actually, you've, like, we already covered a couple of these, right? Owning what you want, right? You have to, you have, to have a compass. You have to have, like, when we're being guided, like, if, um, you know, ships and airplanes and stuff like that, like, uh, there's a goal where it needs to get to and then there's traction to get there and it changes and it shifts and it does whatever it needs to do but it always has an end goal in mind or else the ship is never gonna get there right it's the same thing for us if you don't have a goal and where you're gonna get then how are you gonna get there now tool number three you need to actually own what you suck at you just gotta own it it's no big deal everybody sucks at some things so you, you don't get to be the, the superhuman person that doesn't suck anything, right? So like we gotta own the things we suck at and just be like, okay, cool, I'm just unseasoned at that. It's no big deal. Like it just, it's gonna take, I just need to put some attention on it and all of a sudden I will be really good at that once I put some attention on it instead of avoiding it and keep taking attention away from it. Now here is my favorite tool out of all of them. It cuts through all of the bullshit. I'm gonna give you guys two of my biggest favorite things, okay? Number one, the first thing we're gonna do is when you're when something like this comes up and gets stirred up, I want you to write down what comes up for you. Remember, I said, I built all of ACA. I know this is true, I'm telling you. If you are willing to show up and do this, your life will change. Every area of your life will change if you're willing to show up and do this. I, I guarantee it. You go do this and tell me nothing changes, right? And that just means you are checking it off his list. You gotta really do it. I mean, you really gotta give it your attention and you gotta do it, okay? You're going to write down the beliefs that popped up when you went to do the thing. This is gonna require you to stand in that tension. It's gonna require you to show up and do something based on who you know that you truly are, not based on how you've been showing up in the past. So you're gonna actually commit to something and you're gonna put your ass on the line and you're gonna show up and then what's gonna happen is shit's gonna get stirred up. When that shit's get, it's like gold, it's absolute gold. Most people never even get that far because they're just staying in the safe zone. So now you've entered a place of playing the game. Now you're in Brene Brown's arena right? Now you're in the arena. Now you're getting your ass kicked. Now you know what it feels like to really be an entrepreneur, to really be living your purpose and in your dreams. Now you're in flow. Now you're listening to soul. Now you're stepping into the place where you don't know how it's all going to work out. This is the badassery place, right? So now that you're at this high level place, shit's going to start to get stirred up and beliefs are going to start to pop up. Those beliefs that were set long ago and all that bullshit happened to you. And then you told yourself something and that you started to believe what was true about you in the world, right? So as that stuff gets ships up, you want to capture it. You want to capture the shit that gets stirred up. Remember, that shit won't get stirred up if you're not doing anything. If you're just acting however you did yesterday and the day before, nothing's going to get stirred up. You're going to go, instead of stirring up the valuable gold that's going to propel you forward and change your entire life and change all the lives around you, you're going to go back to, but why? And how come I can't? And this is so hard and I'm trying everything. That's what we do instead. 
th those are the behaviors, right? You'll do that instead, okay? So first you're gonna capture the thing that came up. What is the story? What is the belief? What is the excuse? What is the, you know, the thing that you condemned yourself for, etc. okay? After you've done that, you're gonna ask yourself, is this true? This is based on neuroscience. This is literally rewiring your brain, right? Like I say to all my clients, you're gonna know what it feels like to actually change the structure of your brain. That's pretty badass. Because <laughs> you actually will physically change the structure of your brain, literally, right? I'm no longer available for why and how, etc. cetera. <laughs> Hell yes, right? And the way that we actually it's sort of fun to like, we like to diagnose ourselves. Like we're just human beings and we're smart and we like to diagnose ourselves, right? So the way that you get to still be able to do that is by asking yourself, is this true? And then what do I actually believe about this? I had to do this and listen, I mean, I, some people know my story, right? Like when I was going through this, trying to shift out of this, right? Because I, I had gone through an event or multiple events where my, you know, something bad had happened. And so I told myself a story and the story was, if I leave, something bad's going to happen to my kids, right? So like when I had to face this, I pissed my pants. It was like intense, right? And most things are not going to be anywhere near that intense, right? But I don't know, maybe some of them are. Most of us have been through a lot of crazy shit. Right? So like, I got to look at that and be like, is that really true? And it's like, my heart's pounding. I start sweating, right? Like it feels so true because we've told ourselves so many times over and over and over that we have taught our entire nervous system. This is truth. This is truth with a capital T. This is what it is. This is something to be feared. This will kill everybody I love. Don't go here. Alarm, alarm, alarm. Right? So it'll feel that way when shit gets flushed up. That's what it feels. It feels like something screaming in our ear, like, no, 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 don't. It's going to be bad. And then we're like, I can't. And then we start justifying we all the excuses why we can't look at it. But it's safe. It's, I, it is so safe to look at this. You are not going to get hurt. Nobody around you is going to get hurt. You're not going to have so much shit flushed up that you can't handle it. Dealing with stuff never killed anybody. But you know what did kill people? Not dealing with it. Actually not dealing with the shit in our life will kill you. It really will kill you. It causes disease, internalization. You show up as a human being that you're not proud of and you're not in alignment with. But actually just being honest with yourself about what you feel and what you need and what thoughts you're thinking and what beliefs you have going on, it will not kill you. It is going to save you. It is going to propel you. It is going to bring you to a new level. It's going to bring you places where you're really proud of yourself and you look back and you're like, fuck yeah. That's who I'm meant to be. That feels in alignment. That's who I always knew I was meant to be. That is taking your power back and showing the fuck up, right? But really, it actually does begin with you being willing to start to look at these things, these things that feel like they're in the dark or they're creepy or they're hidden or they're skeletons or whatever we feel like they are, or they're just not important, right? It doesn't always have to be like dramatic and traumatic. Sometimes it's just like, like I'm, I'm too smart. I'm too much of a doer. Like I'm a go, I'm not like, I don't need to deal with that stuff. That's like woo woo. Or that's like, it feels like since I'm not doing something, it's not important. Well, evidence would show to the contrary. Otherwise you'd have a multi seven figure business. Or if your dream is something else, you would already be crushing that dream. Does that make sense? You sketch just said, um, important at the same time. <laughs> he must be cool. Like mommy. Does this make sense? Let me know in the comments if this is registering, if this is making sense, what is coming up for you guys? I want to hear because this is big stuff, right? Yes. I want to hear like, say it back to me. What are you guys understanding about this? Cause this is going to change everything for you. I'm telling you, this will change everything for you. This is the thing. Like when people ask, like if you could, if you could teach one, if you were like going to die and the whole entire world was listening and you had a microphone, what would you say to the entire world? This is what I would tell the entire world. This is my purpose and why I'm here for people to understand this because our culture has taught us the exact opposite and everybody's suffering and, and drowning and overwhelmed. It's Oh, it's awful, right? And we're done with this. Making lotus scent. It's painful process, but not going to kill me. It will not kill you. It's going to heal you, bring you back to life, bring back vitality. And you're going to watch your behavior start to change. The behavior that has been driving you nuts that you can't seem to shift will shift. It will change. And it will feel like it was really easy. It, you'll just feel like, wow, like I'm just shifting. It's really, that's why it doesn't bother me, right? Like when I look at where I'm at and like, okay, two years ago I was here. Normally I do my journaling with my girls now, right? It'll feel like 
going to those things are going to kill you. But what will happen is you will actually slow down enough to acknowledge what's coming up. Like, what are you actually feeling? What are you thinking? What are the beliefs going on? And then like, as I look at where I was two years ago, you know, on food stamps, I was a mess. I was on antidepressants, anti-anxiety. I guess it was like two and a half years ago now. Anti-anxiety. It's like, I mean, it was just, I was a bundle of nerves. I was always stressed out. Everything felt like, like a push. Like I was always in a constant marathon. And if I stopped for four seconds, everything was going to fall apart. I mean, just how every, it felt like everything was a mystery and like a puzzle that I just couldn't figure out. Like why? I don't understand how other people just seem to like, it seems so much easier for them. Like I just didn't understand. Right this is it like this is what changed everything and the reason why I'm at such peace about where I'm at like there are definitely areas where I'm like oh I would I cannot wait till this and this and this area are like up leveled and seasoned but the reason it doesn't bother me at all and I'm so free to say it I'm not triggered and like if someone judged me or criticized me it wouldn't matter because I know what I'm telling you is so real and works so well and I apply it to my life consistently so I know it's only a matter of time before those things shift I'm just patient and I, I, I surrender to being where I'm at, knowing that this is perfectly exactly where I'm meant to be. I wasn't supposed to be any better than this. I wasn't supposed to do any better than this. Everything is working for my good. Exciting things are coming and I get to just keep learning myself and allowing what comes up to come up. And some days it's, it's fucking painful. Some days I don't want to look at it. Some days I don't want to think about it. I don't want to address it. I don't want to feel it. And I don't always do it right. But I do it and I do it consistently enough that my life is transforming in a way where people are like, holy, how are you doing that? Like, how the hell are you doing that? Right? Granted, I always keep myself with mentors. I'm always with a mentor. I'm always getting called more like, who, like if there's someone ahead of me that resonates with me and kind of scares me, like being around them triggers me like, oh my God, it makes me feel like I'm not good enough. I'm like, yep, boom, that's the one, right? Because I will, uh, because that resonated with me because I meant to go there, right? So I'll always keep a mentor, but this is the work right here. Having these tools will change everything for you. What's the one thing you have to do next? Hell yes, Megs, right? What's the one thing I have to do next? And then right? What we're adding on today for day three is actually what gets flushed up when you do it. Because this will be new behavior that wasn't like what you were doing yesterday and the day before. This is a new behavior. So you'll step into it and shit will get flushed up, right? Beliefs and stories and excuses and anger and sadness and frustration and fear. And, and you get to actually capture the gold. Like I'm telling you, I would pay millions of dollars for someone to just hand this over to me and be like, here it is, right? I mean, I would never would because going the journey is the whole purpose. We'd be so bored without the journey. But like, I know the value in those things getting flushed up and me be like, for me to be able to go like, and let's just like capture like, wow, the story was, if I travel, if I'm successful, if I'm happy, if I'm away, if I'm living my purpose, if I'm here with you guys on this training, something bad's gonna happen to my children. I pulled that out like, bam. That is so valuable for me. And then being like, okay, is that really true? And then digesting it and ripping it apart. Like, I don't know. Do I believe that? It feels so true. What do I really believe? What do I believe is true about the world? What about my children? What about my success and happiness? What kind of world am I trying to create for my children? What would I tell them if they were my age? Right? And I, like, I start digesting that for a second and be like, wow, I totally don't fucking believe that. Weird. Right? And then I get to start telling myself the new story over and over and over because a belief is only a thought that you thought over and over and over. So you get to choose the new thought and create the new belief based on that new thought. But that requires discipline. It just requires discipline. And that means you're going to have to counteract the thought that like doing this kind of work doesn't matter. What's more important is going to learn how to write a sales page. <laughs> right? Like when we can see for what it is, like it sounds so ridiculous. It's like, Sometimes it's hard, I feel, to be patient with people that are so stuck on the how, even though, of course, I love them because the ones that are stuck on the how are the mini me's. They're just me two years ago or one year ago even, right? Because that's exactly how I was a year ago. Wow, my finger really is numb, the whole finger. It's really weird, right? So a year ago, it's exactly where I was. So even though it's hard, because I just want to be like, bam, stop, that's not the thing, right? This isn't like a sales ploy. It's just really not the thing, I swear. Like, can you just listen for four seconds? Just fucking hear me. Like, just put that down for four seconds long enough to try on something new and see how that feels. Because the thing you're doing isn't fucking working anyway. So why are you still fighting for it? Why are you stuck on it if it's not working, right? It's like fighting for something, I don't know. Like, I have a migraine, but no, don't do anything about it. Because I just like my migraine. I want to keep my migraine. It's a fucking migraine. <laughs> Let somebody get rid of it, right? All right, let me catch up on these feeds. I know this is true because I have rushed almost my entire life. Slowing down scares me to death. And look, right? Like I literally had someone remind me of this the other day too. 
women have a lot of trouble feeling safe in their own body for many reasons. Sometimes sexual trauma, sometimes just being taken advantage of, being told they love you to find out later they didn't. Sometimes it's just uh, society and cultural pressure to look perfect and then feeling like every time you look at yourself, you're not, you're not living up to that expectation. Sometimes it's uh, self-harm that's going on when you were a child, whether it's bulimia or cutting or all those kind of things. I mean, it's just an endless list of why women feel unsafe in their body, right? It could be shame that was just like someone like really strictly taught you to be a certain way that wasn't really in alignment with who you felt you were, like whatever it is. It's really, it can be really challenging for women to feel safe in their own body, right? Like being present with myself and in my body is not comfortable for me. I don't, I'm not seasoned at it, right? So what did we just talk about? Remember, we just said we get to stop doing, avoiding the things that we suck at. So if we suck at being in our body, the more attention you give it, and if you're honest with yourself and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm just really not that good at slowing down and being present in my body, it's super unfamiliar. So up until now, I have not been choosing to focus on that, but now I'm gonna shift and I'm gonna put my attention there. And when you do, naturally you'll just get better and better because that's where your attention is. Isn't that true in your life? Look at everything that you actually focus on. If you looked at, like, what am I thinking about most of the days, right? Except for worry and fear thoughts. Just like the things that you're thinking about to stay track on actually do, those are the areas where you thrive the most, right? It's the areas where you are either thinking super negative thoughts and like predicting negative things or you're ignoring completely, those are the areas that suck. So, right, do you see why it's, it's not something to judge yourself, it's just valuable information. Like, okay, I suck at slowing down. So what are you gonna do about it, right? What are we gonna do about it? What's the resistance during the squeeze? Is it true 99% of the time it's not close to fucking true, thank God, right? And it's also never as bad as we think it's going to be. We think weird thoughts and, and that's why having a mentorship and like um, having a tribe and like being surrounded by people that um, you know are like-minded and headed in the same direction is so important because it's a place where you can say this shit out loud and when you say it out loud, you're like, God, that sounds ridiculous, right? Like I'm gonna go on a Facebook Live and therefore the universe is opening some kind of portal for harm to come to my children. Like when you say it aloud, it just sounds so ridiculous. But when you're left to your own devices and it's just sort of in there and you're like in compulsion and you're just showing up and doing, 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 you don't see it. You just don't, it does, you don't recognize it as ridiculous as it is. Release all the bullshit, hell yes. It's so easy to just dismiss the feelings as though they're not important bad enough. And if you think about it, not to call men out on here, but I'm going to say the shit because that's what I do. <sighs> men are on a 24-hour uh, testosterone cycle and women are not, right? We have multiple changes throughout days and throughout the month, right? So men sort of have consistently shown up in at least most of the women I've ever talked to's life and in our culture as like sort of like women are dramatic you're, you know, you're, you know, it's like the energy that whether they say it or they don't say it or whether someone in your childhood said it or not, or you have people in your life who say it, the energy tends to be like, you're being dramatic. Like, don't stop making such a big deal about that or like, oh, lighten up or I'm just kidding, right? And so we really have been trained and taught to dismiss our feelings. And from a religious perspective, we've really been taught, yeah, right? And from a religious perspective, we've been taught deny, to deny our body, to deny our longings. Okay, so, um, you know, from a religious perspective, we have really been taught to suppress, right? Like, it's a, like longings and wantings are sinful and we should deny them, right? So I'm just going to put some clarity on that for a second, right? Like, far be it for me to have the balls to put clarity on biblical principles, but I'm going to because it needs to happen. Somebody needs to fucking say it. I agree that we should be denying longings and... Uh, uh, it's like the principle of right longing, wrong medicine, right? You have a longing that is a natural, beautiful, womanly or human being longing that you are needing to be met. And so it's like throwing the baby out with the bathwater, right? So like deny the whole entire longing. How about just like if my longing is to be loved and seen, I'm not just going to go and sleep with 27 men. I'm going to address my longing in a separate way, right? Like, so I think there needs to be some clarity. Like if you're about to behave in a way that's not in alignment with who you are, don't. But if you have a longing that needs to be met and we ignore it, you're going to suffer. And why are we choosing suffering? Like suffering is not noble, 
right? Like you don't need to suffer. There's, there's no need for suffering. Yes, suffering can be beautiful and transform into really powerful things, but you don't have to choose suffering in order to get somewhere powerful and be valuable. That is bullshit. You literally can just be lit up and excited and draw people to that, right? Like drawing people to this higher version of what's available for them and being permission for them to have the same thing. That is absolutely acceptable and you don't need to suffer in order to do that, which means that we need to be out of the practice of completely denying our body and like, it's not safe to be in my body because I might want something. It's like the idea that if I let myself, you know, like check in with what I want to eat, that I'm going to eat chocolate cake every day. No, you won't. You'll be sick of chocolate cake. Trust me. You're not going to go off the deep end. You're not going to squirrel out. You're not going to go insane. You're not going to like, blah, like that's what I feel like we've been taught. Like women are taught, like if you go in your body and you actually are honest about your wants and your longings and your needs, then you're just going to like go off the deep end and you're just going to like go crazy and like become a slud and like become huge fat girl and like no you're not you're not gonna do those things knock it off matter of fact the reason you're choosing behaviors that aren't in alignment with who you are is because you're denying yourself and you're denying your body and you're consistently denying it you're denying your needs you're denying your longings you're denying your wants you're pretending you don't want what you want you're pretending what lights you up doesn't light you up you're trying to force yourself to be what someone else said that you're supposed to be and that causes like this rebellion and then we do shit that we're like oh, I don't know why I did that right? It's actually the exact opposite. That's true. It's the opposite by allowing yourself to actually give yourself what you need. Those like, Oh, for other things will calm down because you're the medicine is going in and healing where it's meant to heal. Your body is guiding you to where you're meant to go and what it needs. And when you can trust enough to listen to that, you'll, you'll exhale on the other side. Like, Oh, that wasn't anywhere near as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought I would go off the deep end. Well, you didn't and you won't. And it's safe for you to be in your body and it's safe for you to listen to your longings and needs and it's safe for you to back those up rather than using this don't be so dramatic don't need so much don't be needy don't be blah 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 rather than using this to suppress the body and deny the body we are going to listen to soul and heart and we're going to listen to our body and use this to back it up every time we're backing up soul we're backing up longings we're backing up needs we're backing up wantings right because they're there for a reason it's like a blueprint of where you're meant to go and so we're just like ignoring the blueprint and then being like why is there no fucking manual on how to be happy and successful in life because <laughs> you're ignoring it this is the manual this is the blueprint and you've just been ignoring it and then wondering why everything feels like such a mystery makes sense What's the one thing you have to do next? Yep, so true. My world will not self-destruct because I stopped, looked, and listened. The exact opposite will happen. The world will self-destruct when you are in constant suppression and you're in constant contract and then you're just striving and like frantically doing a bunch of stuff and like denying all sense of higher purpose and value, right? Thank you so much. This resonates so much. Yay, and I'm glad you found the time, Catherine. Holla out to UK. You're amazing, Mandy. Aw, thanks, Megs. Give a random kiss from a child to give you love. <laughs> She's sweet like that. And I find suffering as often in how I perceive a situation as well. Yeah, because why would we choose that, right? Why do I need to tell myself the story that I'm always suffering, that everything's always hard? What do I gain by that? There's always something to be gained. Any area of your life where you feel like it's just like shit, like this area of my life is just shit, there's a story that you're telling yourself that allows you to be off the hook from feeling the tension that we talked about. We're clever beings. We will do a lot of stuff to avoid feeling that tension. My girlfriend, Laura, and I call it standing in the shit. She, I don't remember, I think she called it that and I just adopted it. It's like standing in the shit. It's like the emotions get flushed up and we want to yell, we want to snap, we want to eat, we want to drink, we want to avoid, we want to do frantic busy work, we want to do whatever we do instead of actually standing in the shit. But standing in the shit is the thing that will make you morph into like the big beautiful bonsai tree for anybody who was here yesterday. Yeah, so it's a choice. It's a choice and it's a bad habit, right? Like, let's just be honest about it. Like, it became a bad habit. It became a bad habit for me to look for the negative and proof that everything's negative instead of pranoia, right? Like, looking for proof that there's good and, of course, this is for me, right? It just became a bad habit, but we have the power to control that and shift that and imagine what life is going to look like on the other side. Coming from a place of knowing things are working for your good and everything's working out and no matter how bad it looks or tough it is, it's for you. It's like literally the whole entire universe showed up and like 70 different like beings all showed up and like 
a thought out how to make this exactly perfectly for you for you to be lit up and have all the things that you long for and all the things that you want because they were given to you on purpose as guidance to get there right so like knowing that it's like when we look at the situations like that it's like oh this situation is no longer a big deal versus I'm looking at it as proof that everything's so hard and complicated and I'm a victim and people are assholes or whatever we tell ourselves right that would be basically what mine was we are taught to suppress our needs and take care of everyone else first. Good point, Andrea. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Like, it's noble for us to give to everyone else first and then give to ourselves. Like, that's why we admire people like Mother Teresa and stuff, right? And I personally admire Mother Teresa. I think it's incredible. I also feel like she was lit up by what she was doing. So, like, you can pretend that what your purpose is, is to be Mother Teresa if you want to, but that's probably not your purpose. Your purpose looks like something else and whatever your purpose is, is in alignment with the longings that you have. Your longings are the guidance to what your purpose is. Do you understand this? They were given to you, they are put in there as a driving beacon for you to know where to go in your life, what to do. So she was lit up by what she did. You get to be lit up by whatever you're choosing to do that lights you up, do you see? So one size does not fit everybody. Some people are meant to be like, <sighs> how do I even say this? <laughs> I don't know if I know how to say this. <laughs> I'm getting myself in trouble. <laughs> I don't pause often, so you know what I was about to say was good. Okay, there are going to be people that are way far to the left and are their purpose in life is to just trigger the shit out of everybody by being super like uh there is a word for it but i can't think of it flamboyant in your face look at me and all my shit right and then there's people who are like mother Teresa, who are going to trigger the shit out of us because they're like like what lights me up is just to serve and do nothing but serve, right? And there's everybody in between. And so for us to be like, well, yes, everybody should be like this. This is the standard. I'm like how stupid, that doesn't even make logical sense, let alone spiritual sense, right? Like you're gonna fall somewhere in that range and you're not gonna know where you are until you start being honest about what you long for and what you want and what lights you up, right? I had this conversation last night with someone around money. She said that if she didn't, monitor her thoughts and think about it often should become unscrupulous <laughs> i asked her is that true she was so shocked to consider that there was another choice yay amazing what the mind does to keep us safe stuck and small it's only job now hear this and remember this your brain and your whole entire nervous system its only job is to keep you doing whatever the fuck you did yesterday and the day before and nothing else only do whatever you did yesterday and the day before because it's the only thing that we know is safe it's like nothing else is allowed right so we get to recognize like that is actually the lowest part of us like the lowest form of functioning so if you want to be the lowest form of functioning by all means continue that shit if you would like to live your purpose and you would like to live to your fullest potential if you would like to kick ass if you would like to change the world if you would like to leave a legacy if you would like to change millions of lives then we're going to try on a new behavior when you are not in alignment within yourself you don't have anything to offer anyone anyway alignment is the most important must start there first by telling the old story only perpetuates more of the same new yet the same same different <laughs> pile of shit i chose to tell my new story hell yes now remember consistency is key right because the way that you got to the old belief which is the behavior that's driving you nuts is by telling yourself that that story over and over and over and over right so we actually have to be consistent and give ourselves some new time to change this new neural pathway right the old neural pathway is always going to exist there but the more consistently you show up and do this new behavior the neuron will start to go to this pathway and it will start to become just the natural behavior suffering is optional yes agreed need to give to yourself first, right? So here's the motto that I live by when it comes to giving, because it was very confusing for me, because remember my pattern was if I'm successful, I'm literally hurting my children and leaving them open for harm. So the thing that I started to use as a tool for that, like here's another tool, was uh, just not bullshitting myself, right? Like I always felt like I was a bad mom because I wasn't the kind of mom who was lit up by being in the kitchen and baking cookies and going to PTO meetings. Like that was not going to happen. That wasn't even hard for me to figure out. That was definitely not happening. Like there were things that like, I felt like I was like maybe a birthday party, like planning a birthday party. Like there were these things that I felt like other moms love doing and they were lit up by and like I wasn't and I would like force myself to do them and judge myself for not enjoying them. And so the standard became, honey, you're pushing the whole table. That's okay. The standard became telling myself the truth. It just became telling myself the truth. And then if someone else had a problem with what was true for me, 
that was their problem because it means they just didn't know how to give themselves permission to live life authentically the way that I was choosing to. So the standard just became stop fucking lying to myself. Stop pretending that you like stuff you don't like. Stop pretending you're good at stuff you're not good at. Stop pretending that the things you are good at aren't enough value for your family and children. Stop pretending that the thing I'm being called to isn't good enough and that there's some magical standard I was supposed to live by, right? So like, I just stopped lying to myself about the shit that I wasn't good at. And now I just say it out loud. Now I just say it out loud. Like, yeah, I'm not any good at that. Like, I don't like doing that. And then I find alternate options. Like I can hire a friend who loves doing it and support her by, you know, paying her to do it. Or I can ask someone else who I know is really good at it. Or I can engage the children for things that they're good at. Like I, you just, once you admit it to yourself and you stop trying to live some cookie cutter life, then you find the tools to actually bring it about in a way that does feel in alignment with you, right? Yes. Okay. You can grate for TLC. I don't know what that means. Nobody will ever have less because you have more. You do not need to get ahead. You never did. And abundance is like oxygen. There's enough for everybody. You being honest about what you fucking need in the world and what you want and what lights you up is going to bring nothing but more good to the world. Think about it. By you being fully expressed and bright and fully yourself and authentic and like choosing to be the woman that you feel like what things actually resonate with you, what do you really need, what do you want, what do you, where are you going, what's the vision you see for yourself. By participating and doing that, how could that ever bring anything harmful to the world? All it could ever do is light up the world and bring more good to the world. You can be great for network marks selling. No, thank you. <laughs> I don't think I'll be selling on TLC. All right, so I'm gonna leave you guys with this. Well, thank you, Nicholas. This is what I'm gonna leave you guys with, okay? If I change nothing, nothing will change. If I continue to tell myself the bullshit story, that frantic action will get me where I wanna go, just taking massive frantic action without slowing down long enough to actually address the things coming in, that I'm not gonna get there. And part of this is actually just being honest with yourself, like what is the environment you have created, right? So. We've talked so much about you and what you're doing, your behavior, what you're looking at, what you're focusing on, tools to use, call yourself to more. That is such valuable shit that will change your life, right? So the last thing that I wanna to talk to you guys is just your environment. Like if we're not paying attention to our environment, we will get sucked into the same thing over and over and over. Like I remember the kids had a bunch of junk food and I really was struggling with eating junk food. I was so emotional eating, that was like, maybe like a year and a half ago, right? And so I finally was just like, hey, I need to not have this shit in the house. I need there not be cookies and ice cream and stuff in the house. And my husband and kids were kind of pissed, like, right? And I was like, well, who am I to like say that the whole house needs to not have this stuff just for me? Like, I should be more disciplined. I shouldn't need this, blah, blah, blah. That's the story we tell ourselves, right? And I was just like, I need this. I need my environment to be safe for me so that I am not, when the trigger hits, right? Before I had any kind of like, you know, tools to use or like momentum on it, the trigger would hit and I would eat it. And then before I know it, it's like, wow, I just did it again. I didn't even think about it. I was just like frantically doing stuff and I just did it again. So I asked for that shit to get out of the house and it has consistently been that way now. And I start, that was just one, one small thing that I did to create a safe environment for myself, for me to thrive. You are going to actually need to have an environment around you where you're, where you're thriving. Right. And I've had so many clients that like, um, well, I'm not even going to get into all that, right? All we need to know is that you need to be honest with yourself about the environment that you're going to need to thrive. So that includes mentorship. That includes freaking having a tribe of people around you. That includes having the kind of foods in your home that are going to help you to thrive. That includes having uh, you know, a clean and organized home. Maybe you need to get a freaking cleaner. I, I paid for cleaners well before I could afford it, right? Like I took that out of money that would have gone to you know, release, like pay off debt or do other stuff. And instead of paying off the debt, I chose to pull in resource and cleaner so that I could have a more clean environment because I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't going to keep it neat and clean. It wasn't something I was good at, right? So like 
that's the same thing as standing in that tension. We pull in those resources before we're ready so that we actually have that relief and then we show up to the next level and you get to trust yourself to do that. So just a question to ask yourself today when you're going through is like, I know, I know I've thrown a lot at you guys, right? This is a lot, but trust that this one in subconsciously. This isn't a book that you were just casually reading. Like we really did this. If you guys heard this, this went in subconsciously and it'll come to mind when you need it to come to mind. You don't need to like worry that you're going to forget it. You won't forget it. You're going to remember this stuff and when you need to, it'll come up, right? So uh, today is just like reassessing what just happened was you guys all just expanded, right? Like we just like, when we do this kind of work and when we see these kind of things, God bless you. Um, I'm using my phone. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. Um, when we expand like this and when you like sort of like that fog parts like this, what happens is uh, we are open for more expansion. So you'd think like once we expand, that's good enough. I'm going to stay here for a while. No, we're going to 10x this shit, right? So you're expanding and you're wide open to receiving right now. Now is the time that you want to launch. Now is the time you want to jump into stuff. You want to make those decisions from this place, from this place of clarity. This is where you want to make your decisions, your investments, your choices, etc. right? So while you're at this high level place and you're at the future you, right three days ago you were at a different place now you're at this new place you want to make decisions from here and you want to look around you look around at your relationships look around at your environment look around at your home look around at the routines you have and we're going to start up leveling that shit right and so like something will stand out and it'll be jarring or it'll be nerve-wracking or it'll feel stressful and so you really want to uh go ahead and allow yourself to uh, be honest about the things that feel jarring and allow yourself to be honest about what you want or what you need right on the other side of that does this make sense Abundance is like oxygen. I love that. The more abundance you have in your life, the more you can give to others. Yes! Environment and people super impactful. Yes! Okay, so how was that for you guys? Shoot me an emoji how this three-day training has been. And I've gotten a lot of messages from people. Um, yeah, so much jarring. It's okay. Remember, it's just information. It's just like the first time we go to work out and everything's awkward. Just keep just keep it one little thing at a time, one small shift, one step. In one year, you'll look back at consistent one small steps and everything will be different. And you're going to be like, holy shit, I can't believe I came this far in one year. Right? Oh, you're so welcome, Andrea. Yeah, during one of the busiest times of you and your family. Oh, thanks for acknowledging that. Yeah, it's fun though. This is what I like. Okay, so everyone's been messaging. They want to know about um, how to work with Craig and I moving forward, how to get support in their business. So I figure we'll just throw this on there. Susan, if you're on, um, can you just throw it in the links? MandyPerry.com. We decided literally for you guys, because we're just getting so many messages and emails, we've decided to actually open up another ACA group for July. The girls are getting epic results in the group. They've transformed so much. This was a powerful group that we just had. And I, I have an inkling that the next one is going to be just as powerful. Um, MandyPerry.com, you can apply for a call with my team, with my husband. Um, just this call, I want you to hear this, really hear me for a second. Just this call alone is life-changing. This is one-on-one -on -one time for you to actually stop and it's like required time, right? Like, so when we go to do it by ourselves, it's hard for us to stop and like allow these things to come up and see them for what they is, right? And like we did this training and stuff like this, but now it's gonna be time for you to directly do it one-on-one -on -one just for you, just for your, like what literally has been blocking you and staying in your way? And what is stop, like what is the thing that you get to do to move that dial? What is your power moves, right? And this isn't gonna be like small playtime stuff. This is gonna be like all in, no bullshit. Like if your vision is to bring your gift into the world and to go big, and to, to, to stop holding back, to really own your power, to go to that next level, this is the kind of support that you're going to want to pull in, right? So this is going to be one-on-one -on -one time, literally for you. It's something we still give in the business. I have considered not doing it because it's so, I mean, it's just such a massive gift to give an entire hour of time away for that one-on-one -on -one time. But it is so life-changing that I don't, I don't know, we're just going to continue to do it because we love, I mean, they, Think about it right like when we get to actually like change lives, transform lives like everybody likes that that feels good for us too right it's like we're in purpose and we're doing that so this is a one-on-one -on -one call the application um it's by application only it's on mandy perry but ah oh, amanda best decision i ever made the call is so powerful make an appointment oh thanks jane it is it really is um he's really incredible man so uh, you'll get that one-on-one -on -one time and then he'll let you know like the, for the ACA July group um, if you want to invest in that, if you want to move forward with us, he'll give you all the details in that call. But for now, don't even worry about that, right? Like for now, it's really like 
I'm going to take this to the next level. So for some people, it's like, no, 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 this was enough. I see enough. I'm going to go implement this. Like, knock it off. We're 10Xing this shit. Remember, the pendulum swings forward only. We're just going to keep the momentum going, right? Like, what? Like, maybe start asking yourself the question, like, well, what would happen if I go to actually go to the next level with this? Like, this feels awesome. But what if I just kept that pace going, kept that momentum going, kept going the next level? What would that look like in 12 weeks, right? Hell yes. That's available for you. Oh, thank you, Susan. She dropped the link in the comments. Um, so it is just so you guys know, it's, um, step-by-step business building. So remember I told you, and like, I really, really mean this every single week, you're going to do an action step, a power move in your business. We take all the bullshit off the table. We only do what your business requires you to do. We're making a power move for you to step up and show up. And I don't care if you're a coach, if you're some kind of other entrepreneur, if you have a different offer, if you're a yoga teacher, whatever it is, it's getting your gift out into the world and showing the fuck up. Right. And like not holding back anymore. So we take a power move in the business and then what happens inevitably is shit gets flushed up. And so we have all these beliefs and stuff flushed up and then we do actual mindset work on that. So every single week we're taking power moves in the business and then we're we're allowing the stuff to get flushed up and like we really create an environment where you feel safe bringing this shit to the table and also not only bringing it to the table but then being able to work through it so then we bring the mindset support so not only are we actually making the power moves but we're dealing with the stuff that usually creates the tension so we snap back and we will consistently deal with those power moves as we do this this last group um one of the girls i won't mention her name just in case but one of the girls actually booked out her entire practice it was like i think it was during the the prep weeks it wasn't even we hadn't even started yet i mean this shit really it's just this is the work this is the thing that moves the dial and gets you to the next level you guys can check out the testimonials on the page so i think my my team put the testimonials up there okay uh do you have any questions about anything anything we've covered today the group coming up etc You rock. Thanks, Adana. Thank you. Hope the move goes through. Me too. We're driving to Sarasota tomorrow. I can't believe we're moving to our dream home. Two years ago, just to, oh, I can't even believe this is happening. I really, I, I really still, I need to do some work on that. I'm going to do journaling today because I should totally be able to believe this is happening, but I still have a part of me that's like, is this really happening? I'll believe it when I'm there. Like there's a part of me that's still like hesitating to accept this much abundance. So I get to work on that shit. That's just me being really honest. Okay. Happy three days. You guys did it. You did all this work and came to the other side. I'm so proud of you guys. It's so incredible to uh, meet the new people we've been meeting and, and get an inside glimpse in the journey. It's really my honor to be part of the journey with you guys. My mom's home to bring Bailey's food here. Thank you, Mandy. I can't wait to join your group. Yay. Awesome. So we're open, by the way. Um, nope, the ACA groups are three months. They're 12 weeks. We do that intentionally because... I mean, it's really, I always give more than 12 weeks. <laughs> no, like this group right here, I created the, AC, uh, the Facebook lives group just to give them extra value and content because like fitting it in 12 weeks is, is, is <laughs> I have to be very decisive and very clear on the power moves uh, for the group. So it's a lot of fun. It's 12 weeks. I mean, you guys have full access to us. You have a private group. You're in there with me. You have a tech person in there for any tech questions you have. We literally have, um, you know, training videos that get dropped. We have live uh, things like this where you get to ask any questions and get coached through mindset, all that kind of stuff. We got meditations. I got templates with worksheets for you guys. I mean, it's, and it's super easy because what happens is if one week something comes out and it's not something where you're at, it doesn't matter. It'll stay there. You have full access indefinitely to all those trainings and you get to just focus on the power move in front of you. And I keep you guys doing that. You're not doing a bunch of frantic, busy work. This isn't hard. This is about actually doing it easy and just doing the power moves and then going to fucking enjoy your life. Do the thing you need to do and then go fucking enjoy your life because you'll get massive results from doing the thing that you've been avoiding instead of doing a bunch of frantic work. And we're literally going to take all that frantic work you were doing and we're going to, we're just going to chuck it. I don't chuck it. We're going to throw it away. You're just not ever going to do it. You're fucking never going to do any of that shit ever. You're going to go and you're going to die later on in your life and you're never going to have done any of that shit and none of it will matter because you never needed to. We're just going to do the things that create the results and nothing else. And then we're going to work through the shit that came up and that stopped you from doing it before, right? So that you get healing in that stuff too. Makes sense. So I really, I'm super excited for you guys to get a chat with my husband. Oh, the thing I want to say, I'm just being honest, we're in the middle of this move, so it's very limited. The calls are very limited. Um, so it really is first come, first serve for the calls. Um, so when you fill out the application, after the application, it'll bring you to a calendar, and then you can pick your time in the calendar. Um, they just updated it now. So um, yeah, so it's just first come, first serve, and we'll announce, we announce it to you guys first. You're the very first to know about it, and then we will uh, send it out to the email list, so they are the second to know, and then we'll announce it publicly. 
cool? Okay, guys, thank you for all the warm wishes for my daughter's healing and for our travel. Great three days, thank you. Here's to embracing this amazing move in your dream home. Yes, love it. My daughter wants to say bye. Bye. Mm -hmm. They're giving you, look at all those hearts. They're giving you tons and tons of hearts and thumbs. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> oh, you guys are the sweetest. I love you so much. All right. I love you guys. Have a fantastic week. Go get them. Um, you know, I, you guys will do this. You're going to. You knew it. You, you wouldn't be here if you didn't know it. You already knew that you were going to do this and you were going to make it to the other side. Now it's just a matter of how torturous and long you draw out the journey or how like fast and, and you know, and, and what's the word, gracefully you get to that next level. <laughs> she said, bye, sweetie pie. Awesome. Love you guys. Talk soon.